welcome back to an all new episode of Conflicts. Today we'll be looking at the all new Hangbot Sirius. A robotic dog or a robot puppy that we originally saw back at CES 2025 and a few months later we have one here today. Now this is currently funding at this exact moment so if you guys wanted to secure your very own check out the link down below in the description. Today we'll be unboxing it, trying it out, and showcasing all the different animations that are pre-defaulted into it, as well as talking a little bit more about what this robot can do going forward. Now do note that this here is a prototype, so it might be a little bit different once it comes out, but it does give you an idea exactly what to expect. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this is the packaging. Now, uh, pretty cool, it comes in a little suitcase. So you can go ahead and carry it about. It does say Sparky on the front. I believe that was the original name that they were going with, but they ended up going with Sirius, uh, which is fine as well. Now, let's open this thing up. We've got these two locks. And uh, it does look like this here is prototype number six. So uh, out of this first batch, this here is number six, which is pretty cool to see. So on the top here, you do have a few different things going on. Obviously you have your robot dog, which we'll be looking at, but we do have a controller. Now this comes in three different ways of operating it. One, obviously being a controller. Two, being an app, which they don't have just yet live. And then third, they have a VR head set up, allowing you to control the robot and see exactly what it can see. I, that is pretty cool. Now uh, the controller it looks very identical to a standard Xbox controller. Uh, so you do get all the same bells and whistles and I think all these are pre-programmed which we'll be trying out in just a little bit. It does come with its own charging cable. So we have a USB-C to USB-C cable. It comes with its own little power adapter or sorry power block. So that's nice that they do include it. A lot of products nowadays don't include the actual power block. So it's a very small robot, very lightweight. Just think of it that way. Um, and it's actually labeled as only one kilogram, which is about 2.2 pounds, I believe. Uh, so that's actually kind of neat because that's probably one of the lightest robot dogs we've ever seen. All right. <laughs> cool. Uh, right off the bat, definitely a very cool looking dog. Um, in its standby state, once it's off, it just kind of lays about. But before we turn it on, I do want to take a look at one thing here. Now, one thing I'm very intrigued by is the legs. So if you kind of look at it here, they actually are almost like an interesting bone-like structure and there's a spring mechanism in them. So when you push on this, it'll actually flex. So it actually uses a very unique way in terms of movement goes and it'll go right back into its return state when you release it. Now it has a very mechanical cyberpunk like feel. Um, and then in terms of charging goes, there's a USB-C port on the rear end right over here. And then it appears there's two USB-C ports on the head as well. Now, other than that, I do see a sensor here on the front. I do see a camera here on the front. And yeah, I mean, other than otherwise, I would say it's a very simple design concept. Uh, the battery pack appears to be here on the bottom as well. So if you do have to remove it, you can. Now that is actually great because a lot of times with these robots is that if you let them sit for too long, the battery will deplete and then it won't actually in fact charge. But this has an actual removable battery. So if you ever do have to swap it out or upgrade, you have that capability. So the Buddha process is relatively quick. Uh, once he stands up, the screen does have to load. Uh, right now it's a blank screen, but eventually that eye pops up and then he'll bark and he'll be on his way. There we go, so you can see the eye there. You can see him kind of looking around. Uh, he can look for his owner. That's the first thing he does, he'll look for his owner. And then after that, he'll track. So if I move my head here, you'll see the head is actually following. And that is a unique thing behind this, giving it lifelike appearance. So it is able to go ahead and look for its owner and then kind of follow it. So if I were on my computer doing editing or something, it will actually like look at me, interact with me. So it definitely gives it that lifelike kind of feel, which I think is really cool. So it does have AI capability. You can ask it different things. Some of the movements that you can do are, are you bored, stomp your feet, uh, are you sleepy? Time for a nap. Are you teasing me? Time to eat. Are you crying? Wake up and stretch. Uh, there's a lot of different commands. Hey Sirius. 
Ballet pose. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> Can you bark? Time to eat. He's actually eating, that's so cool. <laughs> Celebrate. Are you confused? Are you bored? <laughs> Dance three. So cool! <laughs> nice job! Uh, dance too! <laughs> bye bye! And that's how you exit AI voice control. So pretty cool and now he'll just be in his own like autonomous mode which he'll just kind of be playful and just kind of do different motions throughout. So yeah, interesting stuff. So let's go ahead and put him in RC mode. To do that, we'll hold his head up for four seconds. This will put him in his lock state. Okay, green light indication means that it's in lock state. Go ahead and turn on our remote. Now our remote is controlling our dog. So you do have the physical control of the robot, meaning you can move him forward. Uh, and it's actually uh, pressure sensitive. So if you move it slightly, it'll walk slowly. Versus if you push it higher, it'll move faster. And you can make him move forward, backwards, left and right, like an XYZ plane. And then you can also have him rotate by using the right joystick right over here. Now obviously with the uh, spring mechanism, it kind of walks a little bit different, so it's gait is, um, I would say, not as natural, but definitely shows it can handle and move quite fast. Now, we can also make him jump. So if we hit the up analog, he'll hop forward, hop back, hop left, and hop right. So it has a physical rotational aspect of jumping, which is pretty interesting. LB. So this is an animation. You can see that fluid-like movement. B. Oh, it's taking a leak. <laughs> this is X. <laughs> it's like a little bit like attacking. You can hear it barking as well. This is Y. Wow, the movements on this are so fluid. All right, and then uh, we have this button here. Oh, little dance, look at that. All right, and this is another one. That's all the different motions on the controller. Uh, really cool. So again, you know, uh, they do give you that capability to control the robot outside of the autonomous mode. Uh, and that's kind of fun because then you can actually use it as an RC and kind of interact. So if you had a physical pet, you can interact with that, things like that. So pretty interesting stuff. All right, let's go ahead and put this guy to the challenge and see how he can handle an obstacle course. All right, uh, so my kids made an obstacle course uh, for series. Are you ready to go and try this out, guys? Yeah. All right, let's see if you can do this. Go ahead.
taking his own shortcut. ourselves another obstacle course here. Ready Hamza? Alright, let's see what you got. Go ahead. Now, besides that, I mean, hands down, it is a very intuitive robot. You can program it. It's an open source robot. Um, and then you also include different ways of programming it, including using Blender, which is a 3D editing software, which I found very interesting. Um, and uh, you can go to create your own motions, things like that. And the fact that it has so much capability, I think it's actually a very unique and interesting robot. Again, for its size, it is very, very intelligent. And if you are looking for a quadruped robot that you can use as a desktop piece that is interactive, uh, this is great for the autonomous capability. Um, it literally does feel like it's alive and the fact that you can communicate with it without having to repeat yourself over and over again is definitely a plus in my book. And yeah, there you guys have it. If you guys have any questions uh, about Sirius, feel free to comment down below. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.